All right, well, if you're ready, Kristen, I think we should begin because I don't want to take too much time away from um, the time we all need for mindfulness and relaxation this evening. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Stacey Brennan. I'm the Curator of Education for the Lehigh University Art Galleries. I'm joined here with my daughter, Fiona. Um, and before we begin, I just wanted to um, thank Shanti Project for um, partnering with us this evening to present this, this workshop that we all really need in this time of uh, unrest and turmoil and uncertainty. Um, but there is lots of hope. Um, and Dr. Baxter is going to give us some great tips today for mindfulness and um, relaxation. Um, so before we begin, just a heads up that we are going to be recording um, this presentation. Um, and, um, you know, if, if you would like to, we'd love for you to turn on your, your uh, video. You don't have to. Um, we do ask that you uh, mute yourself um, until we open it up for questions, um, just so we have the best audio possible. Um, so just a little time frame. We're going to give you a short overview of an exhibition on view at Lehigh University Art Galleries um, that ties into wellness. Um, we're going to do some yoga and mindfulness with Dr. Baxter. Um, and then a short activity. Um, Dr. Baxter is going to work us, walk us through an activity that we can do after the workshop and we will share a list of supplies and everything so you can do that at home. Um, and then we will wrap up with questions and feedback. So if you're not familiar with the Lehigh University Art Galleries, uh, we are a free museum located on Lehigh University's campus. We have over nearly 17,000 works of art in our collection from diverse time periods and cultures. Um, we showcase these works across seven galleries on the campus, two art study centers. We have a reading room and 50 outdoor sculptures. Um, we are open right now and available by appointment to the public. So we hope you'll come visit us and see our exhibitions. Um, we use our collection as a resource for advancing critical thinking, cultural understanding and well-being, such as workshops like this this evening for the campus and community. And we do that through transformative experiences with art. Um, you can view lots of resources and view our collection on our website at luag.org. And you can also um, explore the collection on Art Store, which is uh, connected through our website. So this evening, um, we're going to look at a couple of works of art to get us started. Um, and they are featured works from our exhibition called Well, 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 Picturing Wellness from the Luag Collection. Um, we have a wonderful um, print here from Andy Warhol that we use to promote this workshop, which you know, I think shows a lot of emotion and also maybe some of the positions we'll be doing this evening with yoga. Um, but I wanted to just start off and if you don't mind, you can um, type in the chat box looking at this work of art. And um, I wanted to see what people um, see within this photograph and what kinds of feelings or emotions this give you, gives you when looking at this work of art. So if you could just chat with us in the chat box here. Joy, happiness, looks like a pose for strength. I, I like that a lot. And taking a breather, yes, something we all need right now for sure. Togetherness, yeah, they seem to all be working together in the same motion, following along, belonging to a community. Inspiration and smiles, senior women breathing and moving. Yeah, so a beautiful photograph of women practicing mindfulness and wellness. And there's really a sense of joy and calm and peacefulness in this photograph. Um, and just a really wonderful way that this photographer captured this moment. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next photograph. What do you see in this photograph and how does it make you feel? Peaceful, relaxed, serenity, great word, carefree, warmth, free, for sure. Wishful for a beach vacation, yes, I think we could all use one of those right now. Warmth. So a beautiful photograph of a moment captured of this individual enjoying the scenery, 
Um, I love the way that the photographer captured the texture of the sand on this person's back. Um, and that moment of him sitting up from laying down on the sand and taking in kind of the scene around him. Um, and that's one of the things why we are exploring these photographs, which are from the collection, because um, as we are all home or, you know, exploring different ways of surviving the pandemic, uh, we have our camera with us, we have our phones, and it's a great opportunity to capture moments of peacefulness um, as reminders. Um, and there are great ways to think about photography for mindfulness in terms of focus, in terms of um, being in the moment and enjoying what we see um, and capturing that to kind of return to that moment. Um, and so as you use your, photo, your camera as a tool, think about ways that you can capture color or texture or things that you might not think about all the time, but it is an opportunity to really kind of center yourself both physically in the moment and also in your mind's eye. Um, the last photograph is this one. And uh, I'll ask you again, how does this make you feel and what do you see? Silliness, for sure. Playfulness. I do want to join them too, Kim. Thank you. Playful. Joy. Upbeat friendship. Yeah, the friendship is something I think really comes through in this photograph. A Kodak moment for sure. Definitely something uh, that could be on a Kodak commercial. Youthful. I love that, Maureen. Yeah, so this wonderful kind of spur of the moment um, photograph, these women you know, they obviously weren't necessarily dressed for the beach, they, but they wanted to experience the ocean. And this sense of like sisterhood or friendliness or community is really captured. Um, and then we have this, you know, photog the photographer taking a photograph of the photographer taking the photograph. So this like interesting moment. Um, and so um, all of these photographs were taken by Leonard Freed. Um, who was an American photographer who was born in 1929 um, and grew up in New York to Jewish parents. And he went to study painting um, in New York and realized um, that it really wasn't, he wanted to be artistic, but he discovered photography and realized that was his passion. Um, and so then he went to Europe to explore Judaism and he photographed all these women and, and communities, Jewish communities in Netherlands. Um, and then after he left uh, the Netherlands, he came back to the United States and was one of the leading photojournalists during the civil rights era. Um, and he published a book that's called um, Black and White America. Um, and he was a photographer for Life magazine. Um, and so he really talks about how um, photography was a way for him to suddenly feel that, here, I'll just read his quote. Um, suddenly I feel that I belong to a tradition and he's talking about life magazine and life photography. I see life, see the world and be witness to great events, peer into the faces of the, the poor, the mad, to understand the shadows of the jungle, the hidden things to see, to rejoice in seeing and to be spiritually enriched. So a really beautiful quote um, from this photographer about, you know, peering through a lens and being able to live vicariously through his subjects, but also to live in the moment and to capture that for the rest of us. Um, so I hope that you'll consider looking more into this photographer, Leonard Freed. Um, you can explore all of the many um, works from this collection um, and this exhibition on our website at luag.org. Um, there are also wonderful resources on Shanti Project's website, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Baxter now, who's going to lead the workshop. Um, and Dr. Baxter is a professor of art ed and education, um, and early childhood education, and she um, teaches at Moravian College. She's a professional artist with an 
extremely talented with a wonderful website and resources, um, which I'm sure she'll talk about, um, as well as a teaching artist for the Shanti Project. And we're so grateful to have Kristen here this evening to lead us through some mindfulness and give us some tips that I think we're all gonna need um, as the winter months approach. So thank you, Kristen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Stacy. I really appreciate it. This is so much fun. This was a highlight of my, my whole week. And, and thank you also to Maureen Wenling and uh, Sarah, Sarah Dennehy also at the Shanti Project. Uh, they have been wonderful to work with. Um, I've been affiliated with them for about four years now. Uh, I came to Shanti Project through my yoga teaching certification, which was through the yoga loft in Bethlehem on the south side of Bethlehem. And I have been teaching uh, mindfulness and art classes at the Northampton County Juvenile Justice Center before the COVID pandemic. We haven't been able to be in there physically uh, recently, um, but also doing mindfulness and art at Central Elementary School and also at Deerth High School, again, before, uh, before the pandemic. Um, so I, I wanted to just let you know too about Shanti Project. If you go on their website, you can read more about all of the programs that they offer. They offer uh, mindfulness both to children, to adults, as well as even in the workplace. So lots of really um, wonderful resources for, for the community. Uh, so what I thought, uh, the way that I structure, structured the evening for us, so I wanted to just introduce a little bit about what is mindfulness. Um, John Kabat-Zinn, he is a professor of uh, medicine at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. He was uh, really the pioneer in bringing mindfulness practices to a scientific community and really building up, um, uh, you know, building up the scientific research behind mindfulness and its benefits to us. So he defines mindfulness as awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, in the service of self-understanding and wisdom. And I want you, I want to read it again, because if you're like me, like none of that is, um, you know, my default setting. <laughs> I, I have that hamster wheel with the hamster running pretty much all day long, worrying about the future. Um, especially now we're, we all come together in this post election week, um, you know, worrying about the future, um, planning for the future, overthinking the future, worrying about what happened yesterday or this afternoon. Um, so I'll read it again and see if these things, um, you know, see, see how intuitive they are for you. Maybe, maybe you're, you're better at this than me. So again, mindfulness is awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally in the service of self-understanding and wisdom. So simply put, it's really, you know, really taking a moment to calm the, the mind chatter, calm the nervous system so that we can think more clearly, so that we can be more compassionate, so that we can be more present and more skillful in the choices we make in our lives. The words non-judgmentally, I think, are super important. And especially when we go into the, the yoga part of it, the movement part of this session, um, notice, when you start thinking, oh, I should be able to do this. I used to be able to do this. <laughs> I used to be able to touch my toes. That used to not hurt, now it does. 
you know, all of this, uh, you know, excessive mind chatter really uh, prevents us from, from really achieving a, a really calm, uh, purposeful, purposeful life. Um, also, I found a quote, and then I'll stop talking. Um, I found a quote by Leonard Freed, the photographer that Stacy was just speaking about, whose work is at the Lehigh Art Galleries. He says, ultimately, photography is about who you are. It's, it's the seeking of truth in relation to yourself, and seeking truth becomes habit. Ultimately, photography is about who you are. It's the seeking of truth in relation to yourself. And seeking truth becomes habit. And I thought that was so relevant and timely for a class on mindfulness. <laughs> because um, that seeking of truth, of our own truth, of our own self-understanding is such an important part of mindfulness. So, um, so for our movement part, I'm going to actually shut my camera off for a second so I can turn my, um, turn my computer around. Um, but for this part, you don't need a yoga mat. You don't really, you don't need any props. This is, um, really meant to be a class that is accessible to most. Um, that said, I know I have a shoulder injury, so I am mindful of that. Um, if you know you have an injury, you can obviously adapt the poses that I suggest just based on your own, um, your own body and how you're feeling tonight. Um, so I will, um, I'll, like I said, I'll just turn off my camera now for a second and just get set up. Um, it's super informal, so when, when I start teaching, if for some reason you can't hear me, it, you, you know, something's not right with technology, just you can go ahead and unmute yourself and um, just let me know. Uh, I teach a first year writing seminar called Yoga and Writing, and uh, we do Zoom yoga every week, so. Uh, so I'm used to that, students unmuting themselves and talking. So it's, it, it's meant to be super informal. So, okay, I'll just um, uh, stop my camera. And if you want to get set up too, you just need some space around you. So on a floor in a living room is perfect, something like that. So I'll meet you on the other side. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start standing. Um, so again, if, if there's any audio or any kind of technical problems, please just unmute yourself and um, we can address that. Okay, so just come to standing and just kind of land here in this space. Maybe have your feet separated a little bit wider than hips distance. Your hands can just be at your sides. If you wanna close your eyes, that would be wonderful. Or you can just gaze down at the floor. And just arrive here in, in this moment. If you want to just take some deep inhales and exhales, maybe roll up your shoulders and just let them go. Just 
just a nice transition from your day to this evening and just kind of going into a mindfulness practice. So when you're ready, just place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And again, you don't have to change your breathing. You don't have to change uh, really anything. Just become aware of what your breath feels like tonight. Are they short, shallow breaths? Is your breathing maybe deeper? Where, where do you notice your breath? Is it kind of all up in your shoulders and kind of stuck? <laughs> um, do you feel your belly more through your ribs, in your belly? Just again, you don't have to change anything, but see if, if you can notice where your breath feels most present. And, and maybe if you don't even have an answer to that, then that's perfectly fine too. With your hands on your, your chest and your belly, just notice if your chest and belly rises and falls. And then on your next exhale, you can just let your hands go back down to your sides. And again, just notice how the environment that you're in right now feels. The temperature of the air in the space where you are right now, is it cool, warm? Are there sounds around you? Maybe there's people in another room or a television on in another room or traffic out your window. Just becoming aware of the, the space that you're in. The temperature, the sounds. Maybe even if there are certain smells in, your, in the room that you're in, maybe somebody's cooking in the kitchen nearby. If you have your eyes closed, can you still see some, some light filtering in through your eyelids? What can you see even with your eyes closed? Is it um, not completely dark where you are. And if your eyes are, are open or partly open, maybe just notice the first thing that appears. The shape of it, the colors. So one of the easiest ways to access mindfulness is just using our senses, which we, we tend to overlook in our busy day-to-day -day lives. So when you're ready, take a little bit um, of time, take a deep, deeper inhales and exhales, maybe roll your shoulders up and down maybe wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit, just bringing your awareness back to your physical body. You can blink open your eyes. And we'll continue kind of exploring how just bringing our sensations back to our physical body, back to the room, that can really give a sense of calm to the nervous system. So let's just start by just rolling your shoulders. 
you know, just becoming aware of our, uh, what our bodies feel like is super mindful and super helpful when we are feeling very stressed. And from there, why don't we take a little bit bigger circles now with your whole arms. And since this is kind of an evening practice, I like to do these a little more slowly, kind of change directions. If you do this in the morning to wake up, you can do it much faster. Then from here, this is kind of fun. This was making my daughter laugh earlier. But bring your arms to stillness and just lift up your right arm. And we're gonna to try to do um, opposite directions. So your right arm is just gonna go forward. Do that a few times. Now your left arm is gonna go backwards. We were having a bit of a laugh about that. I prefer, <clears throat> prefer yoga that is a little bit more free and um, functional and kind of makes you laugh. <laughs> and then you can come to stillness. We'll do that with the left hand. So now the left hand is gonna come forward. And then when you're feeling okay on that side, then we'll have the, the right arm go back. <laughs> If you're totally confused and don't know what's happening, that's okay, because no one can see you unless your camera is on. <laughs> awesome, and then you can shake that out a little bit. And then just bring your arms um, straight in front of you and just open and close your, your hands a few times. We're all on computers all day long, right? And our smartphones can rotate your wrists. So this might feel really good. Another, another uh, thing I like to do is just uh, let your hands come out like you're doing stop. And super gently, super mindfully, take your index finger and just draw back each finger. So I am gently pulling back my thumb, my pointer, my middle finger super gently because um, again we're we don't often stretch our hands <laughs> so this can feel you know quite intense awesome and maybe shake it out a little bit more and then we'll just Warm up the elbows a little bit. Awesome, and then you can just let it come down. And then we'll just, again, really silly uh, twisting from side to side. Let it come really from your hips. You can even let one, one heel come off the floor. You see how my back heel is coming up? Maybe I'll come back, right? So just, let your arms go and let them just flop from one side to the other. You know, just bringing awareness to each of the joints. That's uh, what the purpose of all of this is. <laughs> bringing some movement and lubrication to all the joints. Awesome. And then just come to stillness and just take a moment here, just standing super still. If you want to close your eyes again or just gaze down at the floor, maybe there's a little bit of energy moving here. Awesome. And then from here, we'll just reach all the way up with our arms up and then interlace your fingers and press the palms of your hands towards the ceiling. And then on an exhale, turn the palms of your hands down towards the floor and just press that energy down to the floor. So we'll do that a few times. So on an inhale, reaching your arms up and overhead, inhale, 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 interlace the fingers and push the palms up to the ceiling. And then exhale, 
turn your palms down towards the floor and push all of that tension down. <laughs> so we'll do that a few times, inhaling, reaching up, interlacing the fingers, pressing towards the ceiling, exhaling, pushing that all down. See if you can do that on your own breath just a couple of times. So inhaling, maybe your breath is shorter or longer than I'm cueing. This is a super easy thing that you can do during your day. It's just linking your movements to your breath. It's a super easy way to calm the nervous system. And then on the, the next time, reaching all the way up. And then from here, I'm actually gonna ask you now to bend your knees a little bit. And we're gonna fold all the way forward, all the way down, down, down towards the floor. So some of you, and I'll, I'll turn to the side. Some of you might wanna just stay here with your elbows on your thighs, and that's perfectly fine. Others might, want to reach the floor tonight. But I do want you to explore keeping your knees bent and allowing your head to really hang. So shake your head yes, shake your head no. And, and again, either have your elbows on your thighs, fingertips on the floor, and just take some deep breaths there. And really soften at the base of your neck. One of my yoga teachers at the yoga loft used the analogy of pretend your head is a super ripe mango. <laughs> and that mango is just hanging from the tree. So if that helps to really imagine that you're just really emptying out all of those racing thoughts that we have, just emptying out through that very heavy, ripe mango. <laughs> that was a good visual for me, but. Okay, and then from here, just come down to the floor. So you can just do that by placing one knee on the floor and the other knee on the floor and then just coming to sit. And you can sit in a cross-legged seat or if you prefer to have a little cushion or a yoga block, if you have that, or just come to a seat. And again, let's just take a second here, now that we're, we're, we're seated, just to, again, become aware of this posture so if you, again, if you wanna close your eyes or have a soft gaze down at the mat or at the floor. And now just notice where your body rests on the floor or if you're on a yoga mat or carpet. Um, notice where your hips are sinking deeply into the floor the backs of your legs, maybe your ankles, if you're sitting cross-legged, maybe the sides of your feet. So just notice that space where your body is actually really resting deeply into the floor. And allow your body to just sink into the floor. Imagine going back to that photograph that Stacy showed us, that man sitting on the beach. Imagine that we're sitting on the beach and you're really allowing your body to, to create that imprint in the sand. And then when you're ready, you can just blink open your eyes. Again, we'll reach our arms up 
overhead with an inhale. Exhale your palms together and bring your palms towards your chest. Inhaling, bringing your hands forward and out to the sides. Exhaling, placing your hands behind you. I'll just turn so you can see me. So place your hands behind you. Inhaling, drawing your chest up to the sky, chin to the sky, nice big inhale. And then exhale, just fold over your legs any amount. And I like to have my hands with the backs of my hands on the floor and just folding forward. Kind of in a nice, um, nice little ball there. We'll do that again. Inhaling, reaching your arms up overhead. Exhaling, palms towards your chest. Inhaling, hands forward and out to the sides. Exhaling, drawing your hands behind you. Inhaling, reaching your heart way open to the sky, chin up. And then exhaling, just folding forward and letting it all release. Again, when you're in that forward fold, can you imagine that you can just soften the base of your, your neck and let your head really hang forward? We'll do that one more time, inhaling, reaching up. Exhaling, palms of the hands to the center of the chest. Inhaling, hands forward and out to the sides. Exhaling, hands behind you. Inhaling, reach your heart up to the sky, chin up. Exhaling, folding forward. And when you're ready, just come up to seat and then just extend your legs. Let's sit sideways so you can see me. Um, so just extend your legs forward and we're just gonna do an easy forward fold and you can round your back here. So on an inhale, reach your arms all the way up overhead and then exhale, just round forward. You might only reach your knees, maybe your shins, maybe your ankles, maybe your feet and beyond. <laughs> but you can have a rounded back here. Inhaling, reaching up overhead, nice and tall spine. And then again, exhaling, folding forward. And once more, inhaling, coming up. And exhaling, folding forward. Then from here, just come to seat again. And then what is another really nice stress reliever is to just stretch out the hips a little bit. And a safe way to do that is to just bring the soles of your feet flat on the mat and you can have your hands behind you. You can have your fingers pointing towards the back of the room or you know, pointing out to the side. It's really up to you how your shoulders are feeling. And then just simply take one ankle, it doesn't matter which one. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my right ankle and put it on my left knee. And this might be a, enough of a stretch here on the, on the right hip. If that's not a big deal, you can bring that back foot, the foot that's on the floor, you can bring it closer to you. So we're going for the stretch in the opposite hip here, right? So we have the one foot coming in and that really will tell us how strong the stretch will be. We can put that foot down, maybe shake it out and then we'll do the other side. So now I have my left 
ankle on my right knee. And again, you can play with how far away the, the foot that's on the floor, how far away it is from your torso. And we want a stretch on the left uh, hip. Awesome. And you can just let that go, maybe shake out your legs. And then from here, just um, we're just going to go slowly, roll slowly back down to a final resting posture called Shavasana. If you want to just lay down, you can. <laughs> um, I like to just make a little bit of a challenge and just see if you can roll down as slowly as possible. So it's bringing awareness to your core. And just come all the way down to the mat. You can let your legs just flop out to the sides. Your hands can be right alongside your body with your palms facing up. And just land here. So you stay right there. I'm gonna sit up and talk you through it, but you can stay uh, right where you are in Shavasana. <clears throat> and again, just bring awareness to this posture. So we started standing and then sitting, and now we're laying down. Again, just notice where your body meets the floor or the mat. Notice the places that are sinking deeply into the mat. Allow your heels to just rest deeply on the mat. Just let go of any muscular tension that you have there. Notice your calves. Bring your awareness to the backs of your knees. And for most of us, that area doesn't exactly touch the mat. It might for you. But just notice the difference between the body parts that touch the mat or the floor and the parts that don't. The backs of your thighs and your hips, just allow them to really sink deeply into the floor. Again, just Imagine that we're on that beach <laughs> um, with that gentleman who was sitting there with the sand stuck to his back. He must have been laying in the sand. <laughs> so just imagine you're laying on the beach and just allow the beach to just cradle you. Allow your hips to sink into the mat, your lower back, mid back, upper back and shoulders. the backs of your arms and hands. Just let go of all of that muscular tension that you might be carrying there. Soften the base of your neck. Allow your skull to really rest deeply into the mat or the floor. Even your eye sockets, allow your whole eye socket to really rest deeply. Soften that space between your eyebrows. 
maybe part your lips and teeth and just soften your jaw. And just for the last moment or so, see if you can just bring your awareness just to your breath without judgment. You don't have to change it. You don't have to do anything to your breath. Just see if you can bring your awareness to your breath or the physical sensations in your body just for one minute. And when thoughts intrude, just bring your awareness back to the breath or your body without judging those thoughts. Just allow them to just float away, kind of like watching clouds float by. Now, take a deep breath into your belly and imagine you're exhaling it out through the crown of your head. Then take a deep inhale through the crown of your head and imagine you're exhaling it out through your heart space. Breathe in through the soles of your feet and exhale out the shoulders. Breathe in through the palms of your hands and exhale out through your hips. Breathe deeply in through your knees and exhale out through the belly. Then bring your awareness back to the room and your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit here. Maybe you wanna give yourself a full body stretch and just stretch your arms up over your head and allow your legs to stretch in the opposite direction. You can draw your knees into your chest if you'd like. Maybe rock from side to side. And then when you're ready, just roll to one side and kind of curl up in a little feel position, a little ball there. And you can just take a moment there before you come up to seat. Just resting on your side. You might use your bottom arm as like a little pillow for a moment. Then you can use that top arm that you have and just gently Push your, yourself up to a seated position, but see if you can do that with as little movement as possible. And if with your eyes closed, if that feels appropriate to you. The point of that is to just try to really seal in this wonderful energy that you've 
you've cultivated. And then just on your own time, just join me in a seated position. Rest your palms of your hands on your knees. Again, your eyes can still be closed here. And we'll just take a few deep inhales through the nose. Maybe this time exhaling out through your mouth. If you even want to sigh it out. Again, inhaling deeply. And exhaling, sigh it out. And when you're ready, you can just flutter your eyes open if you haven't fallen asleep. <laughs> and thank you so much for practicing with me. Um, again, I thought I would just shut my camera off for one moment and just bring it over to my, my makeshift craft table in the living room. <laughs> and I can show you the craft that we have for tonight. So if you want to also get a drink of water and stretch a little bit, um, that would be great too. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I am back my, uh, with my small activity here for all of you. So I hope that was fun. I hope you feel a little more relaxed than maybe when you started. I thought I would show you how to make this little set of positivity charms, I'm calling them. <laughs> Here's another little set. Um, you know, it was really wonderful how we came up with all of those words um, at the beginning when we were talking about the photographs and some of us came up with words like friendship and joy and warmth. Those could be really wonderful words that you, you have on these little charms that you can then carry around with you and just make you feel good at any given time. <laughs> um, so the way to do it, it's super easy. If you haven't figured it out yet, right? They're just paper clips and you can use any kind of scrap paper that you have. So for instance, this was a, a bag that I got at a gift shop that I just thought was such a cool bag. I probably have, I probably kept the bag, but not the thing I bought. <laughs> Um, magazine pictures. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, wrapping paper, just birthday party wrapping paper, um, tissue paper that you get from gifts. Also, if you're a student of mine, if you leave artwork behind, I also keep that because it's great for crafting like this. Don't tell my friends at the library, but I actually rip up books. <laughs> Oh, wow. so this was a book, an old book. All you do is, and then maps too. So this was, this was um, from an old school map. Um, so just find the paper that, any paper that you have at home. And then with the paper clip, the part of the paper clip that does not have the, you see how paper clips have this extra opening here at the top? We don't want that side, we want this side. And all you do is slide your paper in here. And then fold it over. And then I just have, this is just um, white Elmer's glue and I like to use a paintbrush. 
but you don't, you can use a glue stick too, I think, but I think the white glue might be better for this. And just fold it up. And then you just, just wrap it. I guess you could wrap it as many times as you want, but I just wrap it like once and trim it and put a little bit more glue there. These are like my favorite thing. I, this is what I wanna do all weekend now. <laughs> so you have your wrapped um, paper clip. And then I came up with different words here. And of course, I have glitter pens. You, you might have just magic markers, but these are glitter pens and just ballpoint black pens. And there are different words that I thought could be really positive, especially um, under all of our stress lately. So I have words like humility, safety, 100%, kindness, light, honesty, amazing, and justice. So again, just cut out your word. You might have to trim it a little bit. and then apply some glue on your paper clip there. If you all are super crafty and you know what Mod, Mod Podge is, that will make it shiny and just, everything's better when it's shiny. <laughs> they even make Mod, Mod Podge with glitter in it, which is just the reason for living. <laughs> Um, so you can make as many as you'd like. You can see this, um, before I tell you that, like if you're wondering, okay, now what do I do when this dries? I bent another paper clip and I just created like a little hanger for it and I just hang, hung it on my bookcase and that allowed it to dry. Um, so once they're dry, um, for this one, this is just like the main, um, you know, the main paper clip, Courage. Um, and then I have the other ones hanging from it. So if this is all the supplies that you have at home, that is totally cool. If you have things, um, like I bought these from Amazon, they're just key rings. So I attach that to this one. And I also have an assortment of beads here. Um, and also, you, you might remember Shrinky Dinks. I don't know if you remember them. Also, reason for being. <laughs> um, so I actually have a little Shrinky Dink. If you don't know what they are, you must Google this. So here's the little Shrinky Dink and then little beads. Um, that can make it fancy. I guess you could also do little tassels and things too, but they're super cute and just a nice reminder of like really positive things that we can look forward to. Um, and also I can, while I have you here, I can also put, um, sorry, that other light. I can put in the chat here, um, the YouTube video that, um, that I watch to get instructions. So she has a ton more ideas. If you have other crafting supplies, she can take this in lots of other directions. Um, so thank you so much. Um, that was so much fun. <laughs> um, I'm sure Stacy at Lehigh and and Maureen at Shanti, if you make these, you know, post on social media. <laughs> Tag us, we would love that. That would be awesome. This was wonderful. I um, can't thank you enough. I know that I needed it and I'm sure that the rest of us, everyone joining us needed it as well. Um, thank you all for taking time this evening. Um, and Dr. Baxter, thank you for sharing your talent and creativity uh -huh. with us. These are, you know, wonderful tips that I think we can take into all of our daily practices um, and just, you know, opportunities for focus and internal reflection and mindfulness, taking just 
a moment to breathe is really a, right. a big difference for sure. Um, so I hope that you will all join us. We have lots of wonderful programs coming up in the galleries, um, lots of great resources on our website, as does Shanti Project and Kristen, um, Kristen's website as well. Um, I'm just going to share our websites real quickly um, in case you're looking for us. Lots of stuff on our website, lots of upcoming programs. Actually, every tomorrow at noon and 1230, we have Lehigh students offering insights into works from the collection. So if you're looking for a little break from your, uh, your day and your lunch break, um, but here are all of our websites here. Um, so I hope you will join us. Um, it's nice to see familiar faces here. And um, thank you again, Dr. Baxter. We really oh. appreciate it. Oh my God, thank you all. That was so much fun. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. We will do this again. I look forward to it. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> thank, thank you, so you Christian and Stacy.